story you're about to hear is true. Aaron Scott. I believe you know him. And what does that have to do with me? We'd like to welcome here to our studios at Calabash TV, a uh, gentleman I've known for a while. Um, we haven't connected in the recent time. Of course, COVID you know, kind of threw everything off, so we haven't spoken for a while. But Demetrius Charles, welcome to Calamash TV. Uh, thank you for having me, Bernard. Thank you. Um, so let me say that um, you are an outstanding solution. You have quite a track record in terms of film, theatre, poetry. We'll talk all about that in just a while. But Demetrius Charles, first of all, welcome. And also, let's start talking about your earlier years growing up in St. Lucia, because you're into film, you're a film producer, you're a poet, you're a director, you're a writer, and there's so many things that you've done. Talk to us about growing up in St. Lucia and how did that prepare you for the transition to the U.S. and those things you got involved with? My mother was a, a, a really good vocalist and I listened to her sing for a very long time in the church choir. I think working at um, the hotels um, when I grew up and I started working at Club St. Lucia, I think that really prepared me for where I'm at today because I got so many opportunities there um, to sing in the piano lounge, to sing at the at the staff um, talent nights, to, to, there was just so many opportunities that helped prepare me for when I made that transition to New York. Now, I know growing up in the church, um, like you there's a lot of singing. I don't know if you played any instruments, because most of us who grew up in the church would have played an instrument or, or you would have been a singer. Um, did you get any inkling any, in, in growing up in the church about theater, writing, and so on? Was that grounded there as well? No, I actually, um, I started playing the guitar. I did not continue with it, though. <laughs> I think my passion was more or less um, using my vocal cords. I, I, I love music, I, 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 I like singing, but most of all, I loved writing. How early did you start writing? Um, from school, um, from primary school Methodist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the funny thing is that they are giving us an, an assignment. And when uh, the teacher started reading my composition, which is how we called it mm -hmm. before, um, <laughs> Um, the kids were laughing, but then she stopped them and she said, wait, you need to hear the rest of the story. And then um, I think that's where I, when I first knew I, how that I was able to write. Mm. Uh, I think that's, that's when I first knew that. Yeah. So now the theater uh, part, did you get that in, in, at the Methodist school or is it when you went to the hotels, you start dabbling in theater a little bit or drama? Um, the funny thing is, um, it's when I went to the hotel. Mm. Uh, um, there is this young lady, and I believe we both know her, um, Erin Shalmine. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I think um, I was doing some work um, in the restaurant, and she heard me just humming mm. um, a song, and she asked me if I wanted to do the Staff Talent Night, and that's where it took off. I got up. I actually got opportunities to to move to England to sing and to to move to Germany to sing. I got those offers, but you know, I was young and I'm a Christian, and my father well, was a former pastor, and so mm -hmm. all of those things played um, um, when it came to the, the decisions I made before moving to New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you had made a move to the U.S., what happened that kind of fast track your development in? poetry, film, theater, and so on? Uh, well, when I moved to New York, I will admit that um, the first job I landed was at a, a cabaret place where they serve food, but they have a cabaret lounge. The first few years, I was intimidated because the, the the level of professionalism that came with those performers, the um the the the, the, the training 
and some of them were coming off Broadway to just to just hang out there and to just sing and to perform. And here I am, this solution, who has who didn't have any training. Um, I was intimidated, but then it was somebody at the bar who who asked me to perform, and then it just took off from there. And I just went straight into writing a, a, a piece called Le Chateau. I'm gonna be a woman of now. I'm gonna crop that hair and extend Ooh. those eyelashes. Um, that was presented in the cabaret room. And when, after that, after it's run, the director, the guy who directed the, um, the, the theater piece, um, Courtney Everett, um, and some other industry professionals um, who came there saw the potential and told me I should continue. For I'm a woman of a lonesome, sinful life. If I had one wish, I'd wish for you, you see. When I first moved here, I mm. actually came to do film. Mm. Um, I was supposed to attend film school. But the New York City Live had me running all around the place. <laughs> so I never ended up doing doing um, that until a few years later when I went to the New York um, Film Academy. Mm -hmm. um, I did a course with them there. Um, but yes, I started to write film before I did theatre. Mm -hmm. I just ended up doing theatre first before I shot my first film. I would have been out sooner if you had not stopped me. I saved your life. How are you saving my life? Why did you decide I want to create a web series and you did a few of them? I don't know. I think it's, it's all about my mood. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes web series, um, the story is so vast that it, it, you have to keep telling it. Um, like pot calling kettle. Things are getting out of hand. I am getting out of hand. Um, when I created that web series, I was on my way back from Montreal when I wrote this piece. And today it's one of the most popular pieces that I've ever written. This is a no look, even for you. And they are all solutions. The people who are acting this piece. And Hi now guys. we have the cast of Pod Calling Kettle Black. So this is? So I'm Faraya. I'm Ketura. And I'm Kezaya. And it was, I think it was set in Canada, was it? I, yes, in Montreal, Canada, uh, yes. All right. And you made a, a deliberate decision. I know you worked with St. Lucians on this as well. Um, how did you connect with them? How did you hook up with them? Because they're all related to me. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's family, right. and because it's family, we get to just relax and just kicks off. Well, honestly, I don't even think there are words to, ex to express how much fun we had. Um, but like Yatura said, it's because we are family, it just, it didn't feel like work. Uh, because um, it was, I was visiting my family mm -hmm. um, in Quebec. And you know, one of my sisters, the one who plays Carol in Port mm -hmm. Colin Kettle, she said, you know, I don't understand you. You, you started with us first. And then you're here creating this for this one, this for this one, this for this one, and you haven't done anything for us. I said, what are you talking about? She said, like, we would like to be in a show too. Um, you started here. And I said, seriously? Whatever is causing this noise, you need to find some way to silence it. I'm trying. It's not about you. Then who the hell is it supposed to be about? Something told me they wanted to do it. So I just wrote, I just started writing and then I went, by the time I arrived in New York, I had five episodes together. Mm. And so I called them and I said like, would you like to hear what I've written so far? And they, then we, I went back, we shot it, everybody loved it. And then we're now on our third season. Do I need to talk to you? About Dick? Yes, of course. Well, I'm done talking because you don't listen. There must have been some talent there as yes. well. Oh, they've always been very talented. Like they mm. said, I did start with them. We used to do those those home shows. It's been three weeks 
seems I'm falling out of Mali and Cassandra. Who really going to have our emotional neighbors? Why would you do that to me? Why would I do what, Marley? Mm. And I used to write and I used to help um, develop a whole piece for, for them. And that's where that comment came from. I have no recollection of this and what I don't know. What I don't give me that shit. I won't. I won't. We need to talk about what happened. I tried to get you to talk here again. I want nothing to do with her. Damn, Tia looks good. Cause I need to leave that girl alone. One enough for you, and you all up on corners. Doesn't mean she my girl. Just um, easy access. The Red Bench was something you filmed that was set in St. Lucia. Yes. Can you give us an idea what inspired that move to come back home and focus on, the, on, on a production called The Red Bench? I would chill with the attitude. I look like Kwana to you. The Peter International Film Festival was having one of the um, one of the annual mm -hmm. screenings in St. Lucia and he had asked me, Ed Herman asked me to, if I could write a short film um, so we can shoot in St. Lucia. So I ended up doing that. We had a casting call. Of course, we had Claudia Edward mm -hmm. um, in mind to play the lead before we even got, before we even got there. We could do this the easy way or we could do this the hard way. Do you understand? We discovered some treasures in St. Lucia and Dominica because two of the leads in the piece, the Dominican um, kids played the role and the St. Lucians, they really blew me away. It's all about um, bullying, um, sexual harassment at school. If you have something to say to Tia, say it to her. Since when are you her champion? I'm no one's champion, but she never speaks ill of you. Show her some respect. I've seen the pictures. You, naked in bed, your breast exposed in the bathroom mirror. I'm not sure. Stop. Why are you protecting him? I'm not. What were the two of you talking about? You married the wrong woman! <laughs> Did I? So one of the films that um, we will feature here on Calabash TV as part of the first step towards our relationship um, is Ascension. I want to take you someplace. Where? A place where you can recite some of that beautiful poetry of yours. Lady Elizabeth. <laughs> Um, very intense film, um, and again, like you mentioned, there were women at the lead. What I noticed as well is that there's heavy influence of poetry in there. I'm sure that came from your own experience writing and so on. But let's talk about Ascension. Yeah. Hey. Oh, hey, 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 hey! What? I am the sort of, um, that sort of individual, I do not like domestic violence. You deal with your shit! yourself oh! <laughs> domestic violence is something that's very dear to my heart because I have seen it happen in my in my home I have seen it happen around me I have it is something that that just aggravates me does she listen to me when I kept talking to her? Leave. And when I do, where do I go? Now, now you use poetry as one of the outlets for the lead actress to 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 to, uh, to, to, uh, to air her feelings and thoughts and so on, and to connect um, with a wider community, a support community, and so on. Talk to us about. Uh, I suppose you would have written the pieces that she she done in 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 when she performed as well. Give us an idea of, of, of what you wanted to, what, what is, it, is it that you wanted to capture and to convey through, the, through poetry? Your 
baritone voice lingers like music in my ear. You and your guitar strumming, melodious, soothing. Your smile broad and inviting. I take pleasure in this, you. Oh, one, I wanted to give her an outlet. So, like you said, to release that feeling. Because I, I, I believe when we write, we can let go of a lot of things. Um, it's just like singing. You could get let go, of, let go of a lot of things. The flickering lights beyond this open bay seemed enchanting. Um, <clears throat> Yet somewhere inside, that concrete forest lies a menace. I wanted to create an avenue for her a body to, of sear and flame to, to use her art to help her get rid of all of the negativity, that using the art as some form of light a vicious narcissist who waited patiently to be unleashed from behind the bars of gentlemanly charm. Girl, I sound like you got a story to tell. <laughs> Away from what all of the darkness. Of and for me, it was finding the light in your darkness. And that's why I use poetry, because I believed um, it was the only avenue she had that can keep her going. Her name is Aya Robinson. Um, she is actually related to Jackie Robinson. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him. He's a black yeah, yeah. football play, um, baseball player. Mm -hmm. um, we met um, through the director, one of the directors I worked with on Le Chateau and Broken. Is everything all right? No, everything's not all right, Lizzie. The damn pasta is salty. Yeah, but I... But what? Can't you do anything right? You sit around this house all day doing nothing, Elizabeth. Can't you get the fucking pasta right? I did do it right, but you... But I what? Hmm? And the, um, her husband who happened to be a police commissioner? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> And I noticed you, 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 you did really cast a powerful person as well to make the point that, you know, it's not just those who are deprived, but also people who are in powerful positions are guilty as well. Yes, I actually, um, I saw him in a play, um, an off-Broadway play. And from that play, I said, oh my God, this guy is really good. So I approached him and um, I spoke to Courtney, who, who partners with me on a lot of stuff. And he approached him and then he, he read the script and he came on board. And um, so did Justin Hall, who played the best friend. If you want to take the son up a bitch down, I can help you. Wow. All right, Demetrius, I think we've covered quite a bit of ground here. Um, we didn't even mention, but yeah, I know you have a, a production company called Demetrius Charles Productions as well. A little birdie told me that you were playing Santa with my money. Just give me until tonight. Why can't we just kill her? Because we need her to find ourselves sick. I'm about to confront an individual about my findings. I discovered something in my investigation. Oh, you had? I thought you had this cover. I do. What I want to know is why you killed my father. Marcelo, some things are better left in the dark. Do you hear me? Moving into 2024, the main focus is going to be writing and collaborating with other production teams. I would like to um, collaborate with St. Lucian production teams. Um, um, Davina Lee, I would like to work with her sometime in the future. Um, Claudia, I, I love Claudia Edward. You know, I, I, I'm I, looking forward to next year where I can possibly um, collaborate with, with these individuals and create something on, in, on the island. I'm Dimitrius, we're really um, happy for the time that you've given us. Absolutely, have a good night. Right. Sure, thanks, appreciate it.